Hi, good evening. Hello there. <laughs> Welcome to the second episode of uh, Pinoy Chow. Uh, good evening to all Filipinos out there. Mabuhay. And Adam. Hello, I'm Adam. I thought you were going to introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my name's Rav, by the way. So sorry about that. So I'm with Adam. He's my he's from UK. And I am. What time is it right now in it is uh half past one in the afternoon. Oh. Yeah. There, good, there you go. Good afternoon. Mm. So yeah, uh, evening. <laughs> good evening. Good evening. Good evening for you, world. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're halfway around the world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, and Definitely, um, yeah. Uh, this is our second episode. This is our second live stream. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Dar Darna, Darna, and, and other Filipino comics as well. Other Fili yes. Although yeah. Darna is the most well known, the most famous, yes. I believe. Yes, Darna is. Uh, if you say Darna, everyone knows it. Household right, name, yeah. Household name right away, and if you're doing something. Like a strong person, uh, and people will say, "Oh, you're like Darna, <laughs> right?" Yeah. And we're going also to talk about a lot of things today. So, uh, please like, subscribe, and uh, uh, share our our video. And you can join our discussion if you have questions regarding yeah. Darna and a lot of things. So, yeah, let's get started. So, so uh, Adam, Darna is very synonymous here in the Philippines. So, it's our version of Superman. Yeah. And so uh, here, uh, Darna was made uh, from uh, was created by Mars Ravello. So, in like nineteen forty-one, I believe. It's like very. It's like just after the Second World. No, it was during the Second World War. <laughs> The story was uh, March Rabelo was uh, what they call this uh, is a janitor at that time in the 1930s. Then she uh, he pitched Darna to all the publications before, but uh, some turned him down because uh, they said uh, uh, a female character is not uh, it's not gonna buy in the market because mm. uh, they said oh uh, it must be like superman so he... very much the same in the in the west as well i can't remember when wonder woman came around she was around similar sort of time maybe a little bit before mm -hmm. but but dana isn't or any filipino superheroes are not known at all in the uk or anywhere in the west to be honest it's because mm -hmm. obviously we've got our own stuff really you know but then yeah. it's ironic that Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Spider Man, they're well known yes. all over the entire world. But yes. Yeah, sadly, Dana and Captain Barbel, et cetera, they're <laughs> it's not Asia. They're just stuck yes. around Asia. I don't yes. know if they're well known in China or Japan, for example, but non existent in the West, I'm afraid. Although I have in seen Japan, some of the films, but uh, yeah. they're not yeah. distributed over here. In Japan, they have San Goku already. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, after the war, uh, Mars Ravello uh, again tried to to pitch, pitch Darna, but the, the, it was uh, accepted in one publication. Uh, I think it's Bulaklak uh, publication. It means flower in English. So right. at first it was a uh, it was. Uh, what do you call this? Uh, Varga. The title was Varga. Varga, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then after two years, I think they had a, they had a disagreement, disagreement yeah. with the editor and he left. So, But the rights for Varga stayed with the publication. Mm. So he left and uh, uh, start, uh, went to another publication. And that's where Darna was born. Yes. And... Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of that, I will show you a video of uh, so we, you can re react. Of, um, who is who is Mars Ravello? Wait, uh, and who's? Uh, I will translate it to you because it's in English. It's a nice piece. I saw it in YouTube. It's a nice piece. Uh, you can uh, what do you call this? 
let's uh let me just uh open it up so i will uh yeah. stop it every now and then so that i can translate it to you in english in english yeah that's cool thank okay. you so i'm going to share my screen now there you go so here what sorry about that na pinaghalong art at storytelling. Sa ngayon, ang mga pinakasikat na kumpanyang gumagawa ng comics sa buong mundo ay ang Marvel at DC oh, Comics. Right. So let's forward it. This is this is our this is Mars Rabelo, our Stanley and the Philosophers. So Stanley, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They look alike as well. Yeah. It's very uh... so, ay batang 50s hanggang so, 90s, malaki ang tsansa na nabasa muna ang isa sa kanya mga So all of this is is uh, creation. There's yeah. Flash, Flash Bomba. There's Darna. Darna, Captain Barbel next Captain to Captain Barbel. And this is Varga. That's Barber, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And the, what, the guy with the, the headless guys. Plastic, Plastic man. man, yeah. He's too tall for the shot, yeah. Yeah, and this is uh, Tiny Tom. Is that Jezebel? Yeah, it is. I can see a mermaid tail. Yeah. So, during the 80s and 90s, there were very... Popular. Darner was very popular. There's a lot of iteration of uh, a lot of movies made for Darner. Then yeah. and Captain Barbell. But uh, yeah, and also right now you, there's a there was a two TV series dedicated for Darner. Mm. Here, I'll more recently that one, like 2005 and nine. Yeah. Ang mga karakter na ginawa niya ng sinabuhay at isinapelikula ay mga aring napanood mo na tulad na lamang ng Darna. So here, let's forward it. Because there's a rumor running around that Mars Rabelo owns Marvel. <laughs> so that's <Right>. not true. <laughs> that's too much of a coincidence by the sound of things. Yeah. Marshal Mars Ravelo ay so itinanganap October 9, 1916 sa Tansa Cavite, panahon kung saan ang Pilipinas ay kolonya pa ng Estados Unidos. He's saying that uh, Mars Ravelo was born in Tansa Cavite and at that time, the uh, Philippines was still under the uh, American Commonwealth. Right. So, yes. Si Mars ay nagtrabaho bilang janitor bago siya naging sikat na manunulat. He worked as a janitor first before he became a writer. Noong siya ay 23 taong gulang na, nagi siyang cartoonist. Pa- when he was... Cartoonist? Yeah, he was... <laughs> I recognize the, that word. <laughs> when he was uh, 23 years old, he became a cartoonist. Para sa Mabuhay Extra. For Mabuhay... Isang Tagalog Weekly News Magazine. Oh, yeah, Ngunit hindi siya nagkakalit ito sapagkat noong 1941. But... Uh, but the sad part is, uh, in 1941, World War II struck. Mm. Yeah. Ay nagsimula na ang World War II. Matapos ang digmaan, mag-isa niyang isinulat at iginuhit para sa Bulaklak Magazine ang superhero na si Varga. So after the war, uh, he drew and wrote Varga for Bulaklak Magazine. It's another right. publication. There go. Pumatok sa mga mambabasa ang karakter na ito, kung kaya't inilathala ito ng Bulaklak Magazine hanggang 1949. So, uh, it was published until 1949. So, it was popular at the time. So, yeah. Matapos lamang ang dalawang taon, ay naging mapait ang relasyon ni Mars Ravelo yeah, sa here, editor ng nasabing magazine. It's not use of body language. Yeah, that uh, there was a disagreement between yeah. Mars Ravelo and the... Uh, editor Kung and he left so, na niyang, na ito. Oh, sorry about that it's an ad <laughs> technical difficulties technical difficulties mm. wait a minute there. sa parehong taon na lisanin niya ang Bulaklak Magazine nagtrabaho naman siya sa Filipino Comics Dahil sa ang pangalan ng karakter na si Varga ay pagmamayari ng Bulaklak Magazine. So, his... Uh, the the creation, creation of Darna, basically, by the look of things. Yeah, this is the creation of Darna because uh, he cannot use Varga in this new publication yeah. since the uh, yeah, Varga is uh, being... Uh, is owned, the rights are owned by Bulaklak Magazine. The previous ones, yeah. Yes. So, Sa tulong ng pag-uhit ni Mr. Nestor Redondo, Binuhay niyang muli ang karakter na ito sa ibang pangalan. 
na kilalang kilala natin ngayon bilang Darna. So, narrator saying, uh, change it to Darna. But I'm surprised actually they were able to pretty much keep the same character though and the look mm. of the character and even the name is very similar. I'm surprised. Yes. Was there no like copyright infringement or anything like that? I think he, he changed a lot of things. Okay. Like, in, Var, uh, in Varga, uh, Varga was an alien who arrived in, in the Earth, uh, yeah. crash landed in the Earth, and be, uh, swallowed the white stone and became uh, Darna. Oh, yeah. I ah, know Varga. Sorry, no Varga. He's, right. he's, the character's name was Narda at that time. Yeah. So, uh, the premise is still the same in, mm -hmm. in Darna, but he changed a little lot. The, uh, the difference is uh, in Darna, uh, 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 like uh, somebody gave the white, uh, the I'm white stone. To, sorry about that. <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> Can't be helped. Yeah, uh, is some some uh, someone gave uh, Narda the white stone to. To, to her yeah. and when he swallowed it uh, when sh she shouts darna then he transforms mm. to darna and it's very similar want... to um it, the dc creation shazam although yes. originally he was called captain marvel pretty much did the same sort of thing shouts shazam and he transforms yes. into captain marvel yes although he's not called captain marvel anymore because of the, the marvel comic one yes you can become shazam now that's right yeah <laughs> And I, also, I still call him Captain Marvel, but then I prefer the DC version. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, that's we're digressing. We're talking about Filipinos. Yeah. Comics. We'll have a different discussion about that. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. and, and uh, when she when she transformed to to uh, he wants to uh, no, he will say Narda so that she mm. will transform to. Uh, Back to, Back to yeah. normal self. So, yeah, let's uh, see again the, the video. Unang lumabas sa Filipino comics noong May 13, 1950. So, Darna was released in 1950. Yeah. Maliban sa Bulaklak Magazine at Filipino comics, ang mga karakter niya ay nailathala din sa Tagalog Classics, Hiwaga Comics, at Special Comics. Ang karakter ni Darna here, ay mas... Here, after... In 1951, the first Darna movie was released. And, and uh, it was directed by Fernando Po Sr. The, uh, if we... His... We call Fernando Po Jr. as our the action king. Okay. He, he, he made a lot of movies. So the senior one was a director. So, but it's interesting that this movie came out a year after the Darna comics came out. Do you think this movie was made mostly on the strength of Varga? Because obviously Varga had been well established by this point. Do you think it's because of the sales of that one that they made Darna? I think so. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah, and and at that time uh, there were a few superhero mm. movies at that because during that time there's a lot of uh, 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 World War II movies and movies, uh, yeah. and uh, drama movies was uh, and I think this is one of the first uh, uh, superhero movies in Filipino. I mean, even in the world, because um, like Superman and Batman, they didn't really have actual feature length films around this time they had serials of like 15 minute chapters that you'd oh, okay. go to the cinema and watch every week they did superman they did batman there was uh the shadow the phantom dick tracy yeah. but it was like almost like a tv show but in the cinema it's not the it's not the movie like this one not a feature length no not none oh. of them oh okay i learned something new again <laughs> but the i could be wrong but the earliest feature-length superhero film that I can think of mm -hmm. is the Adam West Batman film from 1966. But don't quote me on that because I need to double check. But previously, it all been just serials, black and white, 15 mm -hmm. minute episodes for a long ser for a long storyline. But uh, but let me do my research on that one. But I think it's <laughs> the Adam West Batman film is the first one, but I don't know for sure. Even Superman was released in the 60s or 70s, I think. No, the Christopher Reeve uh, Superman film was 1978, 
So yeah, much later, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is the very first uh, Darna. Uh, uh, there's a total of 14 Darna 14, movies yeah. and two TV series, Darna TV series. So Wasn't there a TV series in the 70s as well? Because when I've done my research, I've, there's, hmm. I forget the actress's name, but they mentioned a TV series. And I think there was an animated series in the 80s. I think but, so, yeah, yeah. Right. But I can't find any actual videos mm -hmm. of the animated series. That's why I'm not too sure if it exists or not. Yeah. But it's so, interesting yeah. that Dana got 14 movies and Wonder um, Woman, yes. who, is yes. I, who is arguably what more well-known throughout the world, and yet it took her until 2017 to get her first film. Yes. <laughs> and I think the, the TV series was during the 70s. The 70s, also. Linda Carter, yeah. Linda Carter, yes. Yeah. That's why, it's because of women empowerment, I think. <laughs> yeah, could be. But um, yeah. uh, they were selling quite well in the actual comics of Wonder Woman, so yeah. who knows, really? Most likely, though. Yeah. <laughs> Here, let's uh, let's continue. Popular, nanggawan ito ng pelikulang bersyon ng Royal Films noong 1951. So mula noon, ang karakter na ito ay paulit-ulit na ginawa ng pelikula at mga teleserye. Para sa dagdag kaalaman, Looks like our Cine One project films. Darna, <laughs> Del Rosario, Lisa Moreno, so this is Eva the actresses Montes, who played Gina Parento, uh, Darna, Lima Santos, through the Lorna Tolentino. Yeah, I think she's from the TV series. Hmm? The one we just went past. I've seen her picture and they the text that I've read says that she was in a TV series, not Vilma, the one after oh. Vilma. Lorna, Tol Lorna Tolentino. Uh, yeah, wasn't she in the TV series? Because that's Whenever I've read stuff, mm -hmm. that's what it says, but I don't know for sure. Yeah, I, I'm going to re research about this also. <laughs> okay. Tolentino, yeah. Rio Loxin, Sharon Coneta, Sh Sharon Janet Con Medved, and Janet Abayari, Regine Velasquez, Angel Loxin, and This Maria is the Rivera. TV series now. Regine, yeah. uh, with uh, Starting from Angel Loxin to... Angel. Although... Maria Rivera. I've already forgotten her name, uh, Virginia, the, the one just before Angel. Uh, Anjanette? Uh, no, no, the one after Anjanette, Yari. The next one. Uh, next one is Angel Loxin. No, no, the one in between those two. The one who's in the 2003 Captain Barbell film. Wait, one. Just, just, play, just play here, and then I'll tell okay. you when to pause. It's the very next one. Regine Velasquez. Oh, Regine Velasquez, yeah. I mean, she technically isn't Dana anyway, because she's the she's another character, a love interest yes. of Captain Barbel, but she's only because yes. she's in a she's dreaming about being Dana. So does that really count? <laughs> a little bit. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, it, it's uh, it's in the gray area. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know that she later played Electra in the 2009 series as well, didn't she? Yes. And um, sang the theme to the 2005 series. Yeah. Uh, it's a good song, actually. It's like a Bond yes. song. Yes. Virgin Velasquez is also, uh, we, we call her the song songbird of uh, Asia because she, right. nice, she has a nice voice. Yeah. And this guy is now a senator. All oh, right. <laughs> Which, well, so was. Um, yes. Ida Manzano from the 1986 film as well. He, didn't he become a senator? No, he became... Uh, he went into he, politics, though, didn't he? Yeah, he went to politics, I think, uh, as a congressman. congressman. Right. Uh, yeah. And he ran for vice mayor in 2000, 2006, uh, 2009. Okay. Uh, 2000, yeah, 2000, uh, no, right. 2010. But he lost. So, yeah. yeah, it's back in acting now. <laughs> All right, yeah. and hosting, yes. Mm. So this is Angel Luxin, Angel and Rivera. Rivera. Yeah, the, yeah, they're the ones from the TV series. Yeah, and here uh, Liza Zuberano is yeah. supposed to be supposed to play uh, Darna for Sweet. directed by Eric Matty, but uh, for unforeseen reasons, he, mm. he didn't work out. Yeah, that didn't work out. Sa ngayon, ang karakter ni Darna ay buhay na buhay pa rin. 
the latest is uh, with the... Uh, ay pumutok ang balita na si Liza Soberano ang bagong dana. Ngunit dahil sa isang injury, then, Jane, yeah. Jane De Leon who was the one who, who what do you call this? Uh, is the next dana. Next However, next I've read a tweet, but this was mm-hmm. back in August though, so it might have been rectified. Apparently that move has been cancelled as well. Is that correct? They shelved it. I, they okay. said uh, the uh, the production company said uh, they're gonna shelve it because right. uh, ABS-CBN lost their uh, the rights. The uh, no, not not the rights. Their their franchise to, ah. to air. So they need to cut down. Oh, okay. So yeah. It's, uh, I pinalitan so, so far, Jane is the latest actress. Yes. But she's still yes. definitely playing Donna then. Yes, and okay. the director is Gerald Tarug. Uh, he replaced uh, Eric Matty as a yeah. director for this. So yeah, uh, I haven't. Uh, I saw Jane De Leon uh, uh, was uh, training for Darna, training right. for a year, but because all of a sudden yeah, yeah. the COVID and and a lot of things uh, unforeseen reasons and still do the training just at home <laughs> <laughs> and you know uh angel looks uh wire hanging was the well, uh, she has uh, her back problems yeah yes because Which, she was dangling all the time i mean that's that was something that always bugged me when they were talking about making the new dana movie with eric mm-hmm. matty still she yes. they wanted her to play Dana, which but then she turned it down at first because of her back problems, but then they said they were gonna hold off production until she recovered. And I just thought that was pretty stupid, to be honest, because yes. what are the odds of her getting injured again and might even exactly. be fatal? But they they still cast her in it and look what happened, she got injured again. Fortunately, she she you know, she's still alive, she, thank God, but still yeah. she got injured. Which yes. I just thought was pretty irresponsible, really. I mean, even if she is the most well-known Dana, I'm surprised they actually just didn't go for Marion Riviera since she was technically the current Dana at that point. Because at that time, Marion Riviera got married and had a had a right oh. uh, baby. Had a baby, yes. So, oh, okay. So we cannot hang. Well, you could do it afterwards, or just get or like what they did in the end, just get a new actress. But uh, yeah. I think they were they spent too much time desperately wanting Angel when it was really not, not practical. Yeah, yeah, so it's a shame they delayed the film. Yes, to the point where it is now because of that. And also, Angel is a very good actress. Mm. Um, she's been to the last. Uh, the last TV series she, she's been to was a play. She was playing a soldier, a female right. soldier, an a, assassin. So mm. she's very good in in action films and drama. Yeah. Films. So yeah, and she's very she's a very good actress actually. And and also, uh, you said you watch a lot of uh, Darna. What 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 Darna movies have you seen, Dadam? Let me just double check the probably going to get all the names wrong. So you might have to translate it or tell me how to pronounce it properly, but I'm just going to go in chronological order. The first one, the earliest one I've seen is it's from 1965. It's the one where the tree woman is the villain. It's a black and white film. Dana and Babai Thrud. I think that's how you pronounce that. uh, Wait. um, 1965. So it's, that's the earliest one, anyway. Wait, I'm going to check. So 1965 is oh, Darna and to Tood. Yeah, to but uh, yes. one of the criticisms, <clears throat> one of the criticisms that I read in the reviews, and mm-hmm. I do agree, mm-hmm. is the fact that it's Darna is hardly in the film. She doesn't appear till like maybe the last thirty minutes of the film. It's mostly about the tree woman, which is kind of <laughs> doesn't really make sense. Um, although we have yeah. recently had movies focusing entirely on villains, like the recent Joker film. But Joker film, obviously, yes. back, th- back then, that doesn't make sense. You need to focus on the superheroine. So yes, I didn't yes. think, but I've forgotten so much about that film anyway. Mm-hmm. Then I've seen uh, Donna and the Giants, which is they, the only one that I've seen Vilma Santos. Vilma Santos yes, yes. It was pretty good, actually, from what I remember. Mm-hmm. Then 
then I've seen the 1991 film with Nanette McVeigh. That's been my favourite one. The, mm. I mean, I again, I don't like. I said last episode, I don't know what's going on as far as dialogue is concerned. I don't know what's yes. being said, but visually, it looked really good. It looked very cinematic for something that is only four by three ratio. Yes, it still looks very cinematic. You know, I'd love to watch that in English, but it never got released over here. Yes, we don't even have any subtitles to read it off. So uh, I'll need you to help me. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, that's definitely my favourite one, and then. I've also seen Donna the Return, which I didn't like as much, to be honest. It, um, although Angela Abiari was good in it, she looked the part, mm-hmm. and she had a very warm presence. Whereas the Net Metved, I always felt was not necessarily cold, but she was a lot more serious. She was much more of a badass type of Donna. You know, she got she got down to business. Whereas mm-hmm. Angela Abiari was a lot more, uh, much more of a bubbly, eccentric. No, no, maybe not eccentric, yeah. but she was much more of a warm presence as Dana. Yeah, yeah. But the story I didn't think was as good. I think one of the things I don't like in comic book films is if you're going to adapt a comic and there's so many different villains that you can pick mm-hmm. in the rogues gallery, mm-hmm. I don't like it when a movie it does it. They do it over here in the West as well. I don't like it when they create a brand new villain for the film. So I didn't no. like the fact that you had Valentina in the film, but mm-hmm. she's just, de- this decrepit old woman who's dying and needs to feed on people's life stores to survive. <laughs> yes. Which I've got a problem with that. I'll get back to that in a minute. But then they've got Valentine, her daughter, mm-hmm. who was never in the comics. So they've created this new villain for the film. And it's yes. exactly the same thing as Valentina. Why couldn't, why couldn't that just be Valentina? And instead of Valentina being this old woman who needs to feed on people to live, why couldn't yes. that be the leech woman? <laughs> yes, that, that's. I mean, I like that I've, visually. That's a pretty impressive looking villain, the Leech Woman. And she's only she's not been in any of the films, to my knowledge. I think yeah, the only yeah. time is the 2009 series with mm. uh, Maggie Wilson, I believe her name Maggie, is. Yes, Maggie Wilson. Yes, and I, I like that design of it. She kind of looks like um, the Spider Man villain Carnage. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, I, I mean, hell, if you know, you never know. <laughs> if we say, for example, if you and I ever got the opportunity to write a Dana script I would say first things first let's do a leech woman film that would yes. be my choice maybe but, some uh, some producers can hear us maybe we're reeling Adam and yeah. I, I I will direct and Adam will write <laughs> the first uh, darn uh, yeah. with subtitles <laughs> definitely yeah, <laughs> what, yeah. What was I gonna say but um mm-hmm. mind you going back to the 1991 film mm-hmm. yes. there are three villains in that there's Valentina there's uh Impactor Impacta, yes. Although, actually, hold on, I'm going to pause what I was about to say. Impacta. Now, Impacta is the girl who has the Siamese twin demon, right? Yes, yes. Now, the Impacta that's in the movie, she looks mm. more like Mana Angal. Yes, like Mana Angal. Demon, that one. Why did they change the name? I don't know if, why they did they change the name. Because at that time, in the 90s, there was a. Uh, uh, I can, if I can remember correctly, there was a Mananangal scare, and ah. in in the tabloids, uh, Mananangal was seen like this in this place and like that in this place. It, that was in the nineties, and right, okay. in the tabloids. So maybe they ride yeah. along with in that uh, popularity. <laughs> so, so getting back to my point about creating new villains for the film, I assume mm-hmm. that Ida Manzana's character, Domenico Le Publica, the Publica, yeah, Domenico. Yes. I couldn't find any details about that character. My guess is, was he created for the film? I think he is created for right. the film. Yeah. So, and I mean... It's like... Uh, at least there's two out of the three. Yeah, from the his, comments. Uh, yeah, his, his character was, if I can remember correctly, it's like... It's like... A, philanthropist. Philanthropist. But he was uh, also a cult... He's basically Bruce Wayne, if Bruce Wayne was a cult leader. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, also, with the uh, a fun fact, actually, uh, during Anjanet right. uh, Nabayari's uh, uh, Darna, it's one of the popular at that time. Yeah. Uh, there was a commercial from uh, Toyota. Toyota. Mm-hmm. Uh, this uh, introducing a new vehicle, and right. and you. 
Darna was the one who introduced the car. It was, right. it was she was carrying the Darn, car, yeah. the vehicle, like flying down, going to the Philippines. Because that that vehicle is a uh, called Tamarau FX. It's like an it's an it's like an SUV but smaller <laughs> than an SUV. So yeah, people. Uh, Darna was going down and give, give uh, brought the car down and right. giving it to the masses and people were like. <laughs> going around so yeah. yeah that's why that car is uh, oh that's a darna car <laughs> right okay <laughs> so it, it, just a fun fact uh, uh, the uh, tamara fx was uh, yeah. uh introduced by darn <laughs> oh cool yeah. so you say that was that was anjanet abiari did you say yeah, that that's, that's what that Anjanet, yeah. i guess that was around the mid 90s then because obviously yes. darn of the return was 94 but mm-hmm. like i said i wasn't a big fan of that film that felt it didn't feel as cinematic. It wasn't very dramatic. It seemed very slow paced. Um, yes. Even though it was done by two directors, I forget their names, but whereas Joel Linnum, Joel Linneman, I think yeah. so, Joel who, did, who yes. did the 1991 film, he made it look like a film, whereas the other two directors just made it look like it was made for TV. It seemed mm-hmm. very flat in my opinion. And I also didn't like the fact that, Ida Manzano was also in Dawn of the Return playing a completely different character. I know yes. I know it's not technically a sequel. Yes. But with a title like Dawn of the Return, yes. I w- it comes across like it's a sequel. It's like Batman Returns, yes. which I didn't think was a good title for that film either because Batman never technically left Gotham. So why is it called Batman Returns <laughs> other than yes. it's returning to the cinema? So I felt yeah. Dawn of the Return was the same sort of thing. But I just... Um, there was something else. Yeah, the fact that yeah, he came back. Mm-hmm. And also Valentina. If again, if this is a sequel and Valentina got blown up with a grenade in the nineteen ninety one film and yet she's back in this movie. <laughs> and also what happened to Dong, who was mm-hmm. the middle child in the nineteen ninety one film, who I know yes. wasn't created for the comics, it was created mm-hmm. for the film, but still mm-hmm. it's like so that title really is misleading. It's like it's clearly not a sequel, so just don't call it that. Yeah, <laughs> but, here oh, Every Darna has a different. Uh, it's not like a uh, Western no, it's a different story. It's no continuity. Yeah, no, no continuity. Yes. Right. Oh. Like uh, not unlike like in the Western, like mm. uh, Superman, Spider Man. There's yeah. continuity, well, except for if they're gonna change. We do have a lot of reboots. Do, though. Yeah, yeah, reboots. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, the two Darna TV series. Mm. Uh, one with. Angel Oxine and one with Marin Rivera. It's two separate, different, yeah. separate uh, Darna also. So because they've uh, got completely different sets of villains as well, haven't they? Like the 2005 series. Yes. I don't know if they were ever in the comics, but the ones in the 2009 series were, like the Leech yes. Woman, the Tree Woman, Valentina. Yes. But the 2005 series got, a, from what I've seen, the 2005 series got a pretty nice looking rogues gallery. I mean, Doctor Zombie, you know, yes. he's. He looks like some kind of cyborg skeleton or whatever. It looks quite impressive. Yes. Um, yes. Nosferamus as well, the Grim Reaper. He's yes. a very good visual design. I forget yes. the actor's name, but I know he was in the. He played George in the 1991 film as well. Mm-hmm. So also uh, young Nada. I noticed in in the 1991 film, she later played the Tree Woman in the 2009 series as well. Yeah, that was Francine Prieto. That's it, yeah, Francine. Yeah. Yeah. I need to double check IMDb because. I've actually put I actually put a load of trivia on IMDb. Mm-hmm. If, if you go on IMDb and go to the do you know bit, you'll see a load of stuff that I just put in there. Oh, I really should actually I should look at my own notes. <laughs> yes, and also <laughs> I was uh, I am very what do you call excited for the Darna, the latest Darna that because I, I heard the rumor that since it's made by ABS-CBN and uh, right. uh, almost all the Mars Rabello uh, characters are un- now owned, owned by, by the same. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I was, uh, there was a rumor that they were going to show not only Darna, but the, the rest of the other characters. So they're going to do their own Marvel Cinematic Universe by yes. the of things, yeah. Yes. But it didn't have <laughs> oh. i don't know what's wrong maybe because uh and also uh the because uh in in the province here up north of metro manila abs made the uh soundstage 
uh, pattern yeah. in Hollywood. So they were planning to create this Darna there in that soundstage. So right. I was I was so excited because now there's all there's already a sound. Because before we if we're doing our movies or our series, we do it on location because we don't have a Hollywood like uh, studio. Yeah. Studio. Uh, our studio in AAU is more more high tech than advanced. Some of yeah. Our, yeah <laughs> no. Advanced uh, and and. It's much, uh, and in our sound stage has a, how many? Uh, how many sound stage do we have? Three, I think three, for the school. I, I think I remember three, three sound stages. So yeah, it's. I can't it's, remember. Uh, I didn't use them. <laughs> <laughs> I was well, I used one at least, but I wasn't focusing on directing, so I never, had, I never got the chance to use them. Yeah, it got me. It got me excited because now, uh, and also with. Gerard Tarug as a director. He's mm. a very good director. He made, excuse me, he made the uh, uh, General Luna and Goyo, and it's one of the best. Uh, what do you call this? Uh, timeline, uh, time exact. Uh, what do you call this? Time. Timeline. Uh, no. Uh, Timeless. No, the uh, the production value is like. You are in there in that in, during that time during the. Uh, it's the, basically in, it's engrossing. You you believe it's very believable. Yeah, it's very believable. Okay, so, Gerard Tarug is a, a director who. Is it's accurate for whatever the time. Yes. The, uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Time accurate. Yes. Yeah. So that's why I'm so excited when he was. Uh, chosen uh, as director. And director for uh, for. The, the latest Darna, yeah. Maybe. All right, because he's very good, and also he's a very good composer. So yes, uh, is he doing the music for the film as well? Yes, I, right. I think so. Yes, because for the past two movies, he's the one who made the the music. And right. Okay. He actually, when he directs, he already is the, uh, he already thinking of the the How it's gonna sound how it's been sound the music cues and yes. stuff all yes. right that's why i'm very excited but oh because of covid here we go yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's why there's um maybe darna will be st still here and uh it's gonna be uh introduced to a newer generation cause, yeah because uh the TV series was done during the early 2000s. And it was, it was about 10 years ago. It was the last yes. one with Marin Riviera was 2009. I don't know if yes. it crept into 2010. Yes. I don't know the actual run time of the show, but it started in 2009, didn't it? Yes. It lasted very... two seasons, wasn't it? Yes, in two seasons, yes. And also, yeah, uh, Mars Rabelos Carp. Captain Barbell. So there, mm -hmm. there's a there's a lot of uh, uh, during it was movie before then became a TV series also in yeah in, in GMA seven. So yeah, it's a lot of a uh, lot of superheroes and you know Elastic Man. I know you don't. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah I saw the 2000 what 2002 2003. Yeah. I wasn't a fan of that one to be honest, but. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. uh, which ones do you like um which movies have you seen um or tv shows I, tv i like uh for darna i, I love the the net the net with bed mm. next is uh Anjanet. oh yeah and, and and also with angel Oxine. because yeah uh, she was good in that darna I've not seen any episodes of that series. I've found the occasional clips on YouTube, but not a full episode. I've been able to see the first 30 episodes of the mm -hmm. Marion Riviera series, but mm -hmm. I've not seen a single episode of Angel Loxin's show. So I don't know what it's like. Angel Loxin is more believable as a Darna. Right. Marion Rivera is too pretty for Darna, and he, she is very... Uh, her complex, uh, her complexion. complexion, yes, it's it's not like Darna. Was, uh, well, I don't know, obviously, it would have been that was cosmetics because 
the year before that when she was in Jezebel. She mm -hmm. has more natural skin color, doesn't she? It's yes. More tanned. She Tanned, yes. So yeah, uh, that's why I prefer Angel looks in right. Darna than the uh, Marion Rivera style. But I like uh, Marion Rivera also. Yeah, <laughs> she's pretty. <laughs> oh yeah. And also, uh, when ABS-CBN got the rights for some of uh, all of uh, Mars Ravelo's. Uh, uh, creations like uh, Flash Bomba, uh, Varga, Tiny, Tiny, Tiny Tony, and Dragona. ABS even made a series of that, and also right. they also made in the last season they made uh, like uh, like uh, what what the Arrowverse are doing right now, combining oh, yeah. Arrow, Flash, and different kinds of. Girl. Supergirl, yeah, in one show. So yeah, mm -hmm. they meet like like that. Sad part is, uh, uh, they didn't continue with it because mm -hmm. it was it was uh, at that time it was very expensive, expensive, and I, I don't know if the the younger generation uh, uh, lost interest in them also because right. the rating went down. Mm -hmm. But the first at the first was uh very the ratings are high yeah <laughs> i don't know what I, maybe we can pitch something adam <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah just, uh, just give I us hope... the rights to do well i'd want to do a darna film definitely but uh <laughs> <laughs> who do yes. you want to be a darna um, I, I know you know you... where to begin because obviously I wouldn't, you know, choose a Westerner. That makes no sense. But yes. I don't know enough Filipino actresses mm -hmm. to know which one to pick. And I'm not directing it, so that's your job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, I wouldn't know where to begin. I mean, keep the. Uh, I've already forgotten the name. Jane, the, the latest one. Jane, uh, what do you call this? What's her name? Uh, did Jane Dillian? Dillian. Yeah, yes. Just, Keep her. Yeah, <laughs> she looks maybe. the part. Are we going to make it? If we're going to make a Darna movie, are we going to make it darker or stick to to kid friendly or what do you think, Ada? Um, I forget what the Filipino ratings are over there, but I would personally prefer. What well, actually, what I've liked about Darna is mm. she is very bold and optimistic and mm -hmm. is very colorful looking yeah. superhero and yet her rogues gallery is like the most demonic monstrous group it's... ever it's not just simply <laughs> costume supervillains or gangsters all the time or whatever yes like what you would get in the west it's yes. like if you took if i was to take wonder woman and mm -hmm. have her go up against all the monstrous villains like um clayface man Clay bat yes. bane uh, the yes. lizard venom yes. carnage yes. All yeah. those type of monsters. That's mm -hmm. kind of what I see done. The fact that this is someone that's human looking, big, bold, red costume, and yet she's yeah. up against monsters from hell, basically. It's, it's a <laughs> nice contrast. Or, if, yeah. for example, if I was to take the Christopher Reeve Superman and have him face the Xenobites from Hellraiser, it'd be like <laughs> that contrast. That's what I've always liked. So yeah. if Dana herself is kept very, you know, lighthearted, for example, mm. But yes. the the villains are Heavy. hideous and monstrous. That would yes, yes. I'd like that juxtaposition really. So it probably would have to be a dark film. Yes. But one thing I am getting tired of with Western movies is they have to make everything so dark and brooding, and I'm kind of sick of that <laughs> because I've grown up with superheroes being very bold and comic booky. And exactly, I, I'm not one of these diehard comic fans that you know <laughs> has to take everything so deadly seriously. I look at it for what it is. It is people in spandex punching people <laughs> with no real dilemmas of their inner turmoils yeah. i don't sometimes it's important but other times i really yes. don't care i mean superman yeah. man of steel for example we don't really need him to be that depressing he's yes. supposed to be optimistic and hopeful yes. whereas yeah. batman that makes sense although i do like the adam west campy batman as well in fact more so yeah uh, but yeah there are some that you can't make uh, silly and funny you can't do yes. the punisher and yes. make him 
bold. And uh, I gotta stop yeah. saying. I keep saying bold. I gotta stop saying that word. You know, you can't take the Punisher and make him silly. You silly, have to make yes. him deadly serious. But uh, yes. there are some comics that you can allow that to be larger than life for a change. But no, like Dana would need to be. Yeah, Deadpool as well. Yeah. Yeah. But um, no, Dana would. Yeah, I suppose it would have to be a dark film. But the yes. the tone of the 1991 film is what I would aim for. Because again, that was quite dark from what I yes. saw anyway. Because uh, here in the Philippines, we have a lot of. Because uh, you brought up some hideous monsters. And yeah. We have a lot of uh, folklores. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we have Atik Palang. Atik Palang is a cross between a human with a horse face. All right. Uh, and also, um, uh, what do you call this? Uh, Manananggal, the. Yeah, uh, the, the Batwoman. The Batwoman cuts herself mm. in half. Then, while the only thing that you can defeat her is by put uh, salt in the lower half. <laughs> okay, right. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the folklore, and also there's the Chanak, uh, a baby. Uh, it's like our Chucky. That's, right. Uh. <laughs> The, the Chanak will find its victim by by crying, and you, you will see a infant that looks very innocent. Yeah, you bring it home. Once it's home, it will kill and eat all the the humans in that house. It's <laughs> kind of like a. It sounds very similar to what, say, a Black Widow spider or a Venus flytrap sort of plant yes. would be. It'd be something yes. that's deceiving at first, and then yes, it would then, then kill you. And when kill you when, mm. when you're it will cry and then said like that and right <laughs> and well, also I, I've been listening to fear because if I see a baby crying I'd be annoyed and I wouldn't want to <laughs> sort it out I just I'd walk away from it so <laughs> I'd be safe from those because <laughs> no, uh, it's a Filipino like, you need to care for something oh there's something here and the baby yeah. is crying yeah. and also there's the tick tick it's a uh, it's a uh, hideous monster that goes up in the roof and it preys upon uh pregnant pregnant women, women. They, all right they it uh it has a long tongue and it's uh it will suck the unborn child from the pregnant woman right uh, we have a lot of hideous characters mm. in, in in the comics yeah yeah and lately uh there's a lot of uh comics uh like uh in the 90s when i when i was i was growing up i was uh what do you call this uh i was collecting filipino comics uh funny comics it's right funny comics yeah they made uh combatron uh it's uh i'll show you so it's it's uh would uh what they call this uh departure from all those uh from darna to captain barn or captain barbell more okay. on a different part different style so so here's here's combatron i'll show you combatron wait there you go that's combatron <laughs> looking a lot like mega man <laughs> Yes, he was such an uh, pattern to Mega Man, actually. Mm. And he also has a dog. Look. Right. <laughs> There's a dog. And I can't see him. Where's... Uh... Wait, I'll show you. There. Oh, I think I can just about see him, yeah. There you go. Right. <laughs> so it's like Mega Man also. But uh, the story is different from Mega Man. Yeah. <laughs> He's not battling uh, angry mad scientists. Uh, he is more of like a Dragon Ball, uh, saving the world from uh, monsters, hunkers, monsters, aliens. Yeah. Okay. Yes, and it was made by him, Berlin Manalansai. So mm. yeah, cool. this is one of my favorite. Yeah. Mm, and I hope they make uh, they make a film. Oh film about this all right maybe we can pitch something also with <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, uh, list 
just double checking uh yeah just seeing what other films i've seen we've already mentioned lastic man and yeah. i've seen the i've seen two captain barbell films the 1986 and the 2003 films um uh, they're all right no, well, oh, the one wait. from 86 was ida manzana ida manzana yes and that's yeah. that's got dana in a cameo though she's like a secondary character or something mm. uh, i forget the actress's name and the next one was 2003 2003 yes that's the one that i've mentioned earlier about virginia oh, well. in a dream sequence so it doesn't yeah. really count <laughs> It's Bong Revilla, uh, the one who became uh, a senator. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also that certain actor is um, also made uh, Pandai movies. You know Pandai? In, uh, no, uh, no, I'm afraid not. So it's, uh, it's also one of the popular uh, alongside with Darna and Captain Barbell. It's a uh, uh, Pandai means blacksmith. In, okay in in english but he's uh here i'll show you pandai because because uh, it's also a nice uh okay and so here here you go hmm. so pandai is like this uh, he's uh the original ones played by fernando po jr then right with the uh, uh, Jericho Rosales, the TV series, then to to Wong Revilla, the mm. this the Captain Barbell, uh, Captain Barbell also. Rise, okay. And the latest was with the with the uh, played by Coco Martin. Here, Pandai is more modern and fights uh, evil. Right. <laughs> then. That's timeless, though fighting evil. <laughs> That's not exactly <laughs> modern, but yeah. No, um, the, the the look is modern. Yeah, the mo look is modern yeah. and a lot different. But um, the storyline is timeless. Yeah, yeah I guess you. Yeah. Because during Fernando Po's time, the panda is like, uh, uh, it's like watching Troy. You know the old Troy, the old. 70s movies 50s movies uh, it's more of a lot of extras mm. uh, it's like that pandai was like that okay. and it, uh, i think also the size of the sword as well is a big difference as well because no actually that, that sword is quite uh, tiny compared to the picture that's further uh, down yeah it's a magical sword uh, it starts like that it starts oh, like it a grows, dagger, it? Okay. and it grows when you say pandai and it there's a magical and yeah <laughs> i can remember the sound effect <laughs> i was gonna say didn't um mm. not not really a big fan of thundercats but i believe yes, same as yes. As well. it would grow as well wouldn't it yes same but i think pandai was the first. first yeah first. yeah probably <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah wait to look for yeah, the what Pandai was uh, he fights uh, Lizardo, his uh, nemesis is Lizardo, right. uh, and he fights an uh, army of dead, army of uh, Aswang, uh, Aswang, yes, also. All right. So and he he, uh, he has a necromancer enemy also. So mm. yeah, it's almost same with Darna, but without yeah. without the flying and pandai always gets injured in in his fight then suddenly miraculously he became strong Recovers, he yeah. Erased, yeah, erased his sword uh, and he said he's so seeing, it's, yeah. it's instead of a superhero thing he's kind of channeling more conan the barbarian or he-man type of thing he like, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah like that all right and, and you, this one guy fighting a large army yeah yeah so, like, you know, it's like that and uh, uh, pandai was like that and, okay and the latest irritation was more of a uh, uh, pandai the 2017 it's like a uh, modern mm. time somebody picked up the sword and became yeah. a pandai yeah but the original pandais were were like out of this world uh, rescue uh -huh. Rescue a damsel in distress. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> it's like a hero's journey. Always a hero's journey. 
that's why when I heard of uh, when we were in AAU and uh, their this uh, Stuart our Stuart Thomas, yeah, our, uh, explaining to me uh, the hero's journey. Hero's journey. Yeah. I searched for movies. Who uh, said, oh, Panda is same as, as Hero's Journey. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> So I, yeah, <clears throat> that's the over. There's a lot to discuss, actually. I say there's uh, just looking at my notes. I've seen two Jezebel films as well. Yeah, I don't know Jezebel. if you've seen any of them. I've seen the the 1990 film and the 96 film, and I've seen the first 20 episodes of I like Mario the, Riviera uh, series as well. I like the Alice Dixon Jezebel actually. Which one's that? 90, uh, 96? Uh, check. Yes, I think the nineteen ninety six. Right. Right. Uh, Alice Dixon. No, nineteen ninety. Alice Dixon. Right. And Charlene uh, Charlene Gonzalez was the nineteen ninety six. Okay, right. I know the writer of I think one of the writers. Mm -hmm. The guy who wrote the nineteen ninety Dana film was either the sole writer or he was the co writer of the ninety six Jezebel film as well. Forget the guy's name, though. I have to double-check IMDb. I'll do that. <laughs> really got to make a habit of checking IMDb. Yeah. So, yeah, Mars Rabelo was yeah, the first Mars. hour. He was our... Frank Riviera. Frank Riviera. River... Sorry, yeah. Yeah, he yeah. did um, Jezebel 96 as well as 91, Donna. Yeah. Sorry, you were saying? Yeah, uh, I was saying that uh, Mars Rabelo is is really like our Stan Lee. He made yeah. a lot of a, a lot of his creation were influential to mm. a lot of Filipinos, and like Jezebel, uh, a story about it's like closely related to to the Little Mermaid. Little Mermaid. But, Funny enough, because I've not seen the Disney film of Little that Mermaid. or. Um, <laughs> I forget what mythology, what country it's, what it comes from, the book. I think it came from a book, if I remember rightly. But either way, I don't know a thing about The Little Mermaid, but I've seen two Jezebel films, so that's kind of ironic. <laughs> but I gather it's a similar sort of storyline. Yeah, it's like... Cause I'm not interested in watching the Disney film. I, I'm not a fan of Disney, so, <laughs> so yeah. I'll, I'll make do with that. Yeah, so it, it's nice to know that you prefer Jezebel than Disney. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I was surprised when I first saw, when I first read about Jezebel. I actually thought that it was kind of in, it was kind of interesting to have a mermaid superhero, but yes. then it turns out she isn't really a superhero. She's just a, it's more of a fairy tale type of storyline, isn't it? Yes, and more of a, she's in, she's in love in a man. Yeah, the human. Uh, yeah, human. Uh, Fredo. Yeah, and. Uh, because yeah, even yeah. in even in DC and Marvel, we've got Aquaman and the Submariner. Yet they're not mermaids; they they have human <laughs> legs. So, yes. to my knowledge, there isn't an actual mermaid superhero. <laughs> I could <laughs> be wrong, but I don't know for sure. Yeah. Also, Marsh Rabelo made Bonjing also a strong man who who uh, man of a child. Man of a child. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's funny. They made one movie of that. It was starred by Jimmy Santos, the way back in the nineties. Right, it, and also if the if we have a saying here: if you you act like a child, you're a bonjing. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the, uh, it was a lot of a uh, lot to discuss. Maybe yes, mm. uh, we can we can continue the next time, and and. Let's dig deeper and different. Uh, uh, what do you call this? Uh, dig deeper in certain topics. Get more out. Yeah. Also, although we haven't checked the, I've certainly not been able to check the comments. See if anyone's said anything. But we could always ask the audience what they think as well. What their favorite Dana film is, for example, or, or whatever. Yes. Yes. Get uh, a poll up or something. Yeah, I'll we'll make a poll next time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounds good to me. Yeah. <clears throat> 
that was that was, that was fast. You already done with the one yeah. one hour, <laughs> and uh, as long as we're entertaining, that's the important thing. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and watch out uh, for our next episode. So we're going. It's gonna same be same time next week. Yeah, same time. It's gonna be eight thirty p.m. in the Philippines and one thirty p.m. over here in the UK. In the UK in the afternoon. And so, if you're in any other country, uh, figure out for yourself. <laughs> if you're in America, then well, I don't know. If you're in America, it's around 5 a.m. in Western time. <laughs> Just say which, which part of America, though? It could be East or West or Central. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, maybe uh, watch out. We are going, we're going to have a guest next week. So we're not going to say anything first because it's a surprise so yeah yeah just, uh, just watch watch out for our next episode this has been rav uh don't forget to please like uh sub subscribe and follow our facebook and youtube page it's under there it's moving under there you can cl uh, check it out and uh, watch our first episode and yeah and this is adam it's been fun Thanks for having me again. And yeah, I'm enjoying this. I'll look forward to the next one. Yes. And so uh, before we go, uh, we go, Adam, uh, some of our, some of the comments, uh, I should teach you some Tagalog words. Maybe next episode, I will teach Adam some Tagalog words. <laughs> and I also, know you, do a, sorry, what? I know, I know you know some Tagalog words, Adam. I've picked up some thanks to like subtitles. Like I know, mm -hmm. uh, so, 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 again, I'm probably going to pronounce them wrong, but whatever. So, 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 so means next time. Yes, so, 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 so means uh, next time. Yes. Um, what was the other one? Marami, marami means many, doesn't it? Many, yes. Marami means many, yes. And samundu means ground or earth. Samundu, earth, yes. It's earth, okay. Yes. So, they're just words that I picked up. That's not. I can't do a sentence. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what hello is in Tagalog, so I'm screwed. What? What's uh, I don't what's even know that? what hello is in Tagalog. Hello, so. oh, hello, me, uh, hello, mabuhay, <laughs> kamusta? Kamusta means uh, uh, how are you? <laughs> kamusta. Uh, ka kamusta. Kamusta. That's how are you? How are you? Okay, right. Um, how did I do, everybody out there? <laughs> Is that good? <laughs> it sounds good. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, God, that's going to be embarrassing if a, one episode is just you trying to teach me Tagalog. I don't know, every me, episode. Me looking will... retarded or something. <laughs> Next time I'll give you a hard one. <laughs> a hard Filipino don't, that, word. If people didn't realize that we're talking about teaching languages that would have been very the kind of that would have been very sexual connotation that would have been very disturbing is that like, i'm going to give you a hard one it's like please don't say that out loud that's very <laughs> uh, that's very misleading <laughs> no, <laughs> no thank you <laughs> okay uh we already reached our uh one hour mark so yes uh just uh don't forget to follow like, like share subscribe, subscribe. Share. yes and ask us do, questions yes anything do, if you want if you have any suggestion you want to talk about with adam yes we, we're, we're free we're open okay yeah, and, sounds good to me <laughs> good night take care <laughs>